This is the OTP pregame presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Plan on paying less for the coverage you need with Farm Bureau Health Plans. Get a quote today at FBHP.com. With Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Welcome to the OTP pregame. I love the OTP pregame. And you know who our special guest is today? The great Jim Wyatt. <laughs> yes. TennesseeTitans.com senior writer, editor. Welcome. Glad to be here. When's the last time I did it? What game was this uh, when I did this the last time? I'm trying to figure out whether it brought us any uh, any luck. I don't think so. I you were prior to Miami? I didn't. Were uh, you, yeah. Were you before Miami? Maybe you Miami? were prior to Miami. I could be. I'll go ahead and say that. We'll go with that. We'll have good vibes to start. The OTP pregame involves five topics for our guest mm-hmm. to discuss with us. Uh, topic one is obviously got to be the trades, which are now official. The Tennessee Titans made a trade with the Kansas City Chiefs. The Titans receive a conditional fifth-round selection. Kansas City receives DeAndre Hopkins. Then the Titans have made a trade with Seattle. Tennessee receives linebacker Jerome Baker in a 2025 fourth-round pick. Seattle receives Ernest Jones. All right, so (laughs) here is the question for topic one. With 24 hours of reflection since we started to hear the word of these trades with them becoming official today, the bigger surprise – The Titans trading DeAndre Hopkins and getting what could be a fourth-round draft pick or the haul that the Titans got from Seattle for trading Ernest Jones. Before I go further, it was the Packers game. Uh, So not to kill the vibe, but that was the last time I was on here. So uh, (laughs) Way to backtrack, Jim. (laughs) Yeah, thanks, Jim. Uh, The biggest surprise to me, the Hopkins deal did not surprise me. Uh, I felt like uh, he was on the move. I felt like he – Felt like his time was up here. Uh, the way this season has gone, it just hasn't been a DeAndre Hopkins type season. The Chiefs needed help at receiver. It was, you know, final year of his contract. You know, I've kind of anticipated that happening. I understand it. It's always hard when you lose when you're good players, when you're well known marquee players, but, uh, but, that happens in the league. Didn't surprise me. The Ernest Jones one did surprise me. Initially, it surprised me that he, we would move him because I really like Ernest Jones. I liked him from the time he got here. I think he's a really good player. He's a great guy. Won the NFLPA Community uh, Award a couple of weeks ago for what he did back in his hometown. He's a great culture guy. Uh, but I, And I was surprised by what the Titans were able to get in return for him, the fourth-round pick. And uh, and I think Baker's a really good player. Uh, Ernest Jones in the last year of his deal, he was going to be looking for a, a big money contract. Uh, this team has a really good player in Kenneth Murray, and then I think you add Baker to the mix, and I think he's going to be a good player too. So I get that one, and I think the Titans won that trade, uh, even though I'm acknowledging that Ernest Jones is a hell of a player and uh, I think he's going to be really good in Seattle. And we know that the Titans wanted Jerome Baker – Back in March, it took till October to get him, but seven months ago, they put a lot into trying to get him when he departed Miami. Right, absolutely. So you knew there was some synergy there with what he's able to do, how he fits with what the Titans are trying to do, and it it felt like a great fit there. So to be able to get a player that you already kind of wanted and a fourth-round pick, you're kind of getting a, a little something extra, it feels like. It feels like a great trade. Jerome Baker will wear number 17. Really? Yes. What do we think about 17 on a linebacker? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's going to take some getting used to. You don't see 17 linebacker and 17 very often. You don't see a 17 making a tackle unless he's thrown an interception most of the time. So uh, so that's going to take some getting used to. That's what he wore at Ohio yeah. State. Yeah, yeah. I That's don't. what he wore in Seattle. Mm-hmm. That is not a linebacker number, and especially coming to a team that has a history with a number 17, it feels like double weird. I don't I don't like all the, the crazy things we're doing with numbers now. We're getting a little too creative, getting a little too loosey-goosey with the rules. I don't love it. Ryan Tannehill, of course, 17. Chris Davis, a 17? Yes. Not a linebacker. Uh Doriel, Doriel Green Beckham a 17? Yes. Yep, also not a linebacker. Big, not a linebacker. Bigger than a linebacker. <laughs> he, he was very, Who very else, big. What other 17s do we have? I'm trying to think. Wasn't Damian Williams 17? 
Damian Williams might have been yeah, 17. Could have been. Why is yeah. that in my brain? Yeah. Wow. I'm not great with the numbers, so that Hasn't was... been a lot of Yeah. A lot of 17 wild success here. But what do they all have in common? Not linebackers. <laughs> but he's <laughs> a linebacker. And he is. So maybe he can put some respect on that number. He was born on Christmas Day. Hey, yeah. I, I bet he doesn't like that as much as the rest of us will think that's a He'll fun be 28 fact. on Christmas Day, was originally a third-round pick of Miami out of Ohio State in 2018. Uh, they cut him. They gave him a big contract in 2021, the Dolphins did. They cut him uh, before what would have been the last year of the contract, March 6th. He visited here March the 14th, left, went to Seattle, signed with Seattle. Seattle had him for five games. He missed two games due to a hamstring injury, 37 tackles, one sack, one forced fumble. 100 career games, 618 tackles, 33 tackles for loss, 23 and a half sacks, five interceptions, seven forced fumbles. He is an upgrade as a pass defender. Yeah. He is an excellent pass defender, which Murray is not. And so now you're kind of – before there was a feeling that you had two of the same kind of player in Grant and Murray, and now you have two players that may complement one another. He ran four five three at the Combine. Did you say he played in 100 games? 100 career games, 99 regular season, one postseason. So you're telling me that he only missed – he played 100 games – and he only missed seven games in his whole career? That's right. He wild. missed the final four games of 2023 due to a knee injury. But he has been yeah. a remarkably healthy player, has been battling the hamstring since training camp. Yeah, but, I mean, still for a linebacker, that is a very physical position to be so well intact. That's very impressive. Topic number two go. for Jim Wyatt, the great Jim Wyatt from <laughs> Tennessee Titans. You use that term very loosely. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I've used, how long have I called you that? You yeah, have. Since I appreciate you got that. Here. Yes. Yeah. I appreciate that. So don't act like I'm new to the party, buddy. <laughs> Gee. Ooh. With, with Ooh. the. It's getting what? a little spicy in here. <laughs> well, he's in the Snickers well, hot seat. I'm trying to be wait nice. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's first kind of, of all, a hot table. I didn't do this. this first of all, me. the Snickers hot seat is where Jim Wyatt is. Where hold the Snickers? Uh, that what, would be a Dave happening? McGinnis yeah, that's project. True, they're disappearing. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to name names and call people out, but that is what we do on this podcast. We name names, and Coach Mac is pillaging our Snickers jar. For his trick or treaters, every time I come in here, it gets lower and lower. <laughs> By thinking. the time we get to Oct the end of October, when the trick or treating actually occurs, it will be empty. All right. So, topic number <sighs> two: Who takes DeAndre Hopkins snaps at wide receiver for the Titans starting in Detroit this weekend? Well, I think probably Nick Westbrook Aquina uh, moves up. Um, I, I think Ridley, hopefully. You know, that, that's a that's a spot the Titans have been in. They've got a guy in Calvin Ridley who they're obviously trying to get the ball to, and they've not had a lot of success doing it. And then you've got DeAndre Hopkins out there who obviously wants the ball too and uh, and clearly not very pleased. He wasn't getting it on Sunday, and now that dynamic's gone, I mean, with, with DeAndre Hopkins in Kansas City. So I think maybe you have more success with Ridley and you don't have to worry about the other uh, – future Hall of Famer in the room not being happy. Uh, but then that's Nick Westbrook Aquina, who has just always just stepped up and done his job. I think he obviously is going to get opportunities. Tyler Boyd, you know, all those guys move up. I'm curious to see what the move is on the practice squad because we're we're thin now. We've got three we've got three guys on there and and obviously Mason Kinsey and Tay Martin and then um, Bryce Oliver who I thought did really good in in training camp, I'd be curious to see which one of those guys gets bumped up. I'm wondering if the Titans even need to bump anybody up immediately based on how much three tight end yep. they're playing mm -hmm. right now. And that seems to be – I mean, it's a – and on this very podcast, the official Titans podcast, Cynthia Freeland from NFL Network was our guest, and she talked about that – as one of the huge trends through the first two months of the season. Yeah, she was talking about how many three tight end sets you're seeing just across the league. There's so many different things that guys are doing. 
involving more tight ends. And then today, Nick Holtz was talking about it in his media availability. He was talking about the tight end group kind of as a whole and some of those young guys and starting to get them involved and seeing what they can bring to the table. Yeah, I think this is a huge opportunity for the tight ends group as a collective here because of the amount of things that you can do with that group. Well, we saw Thomas Otakoya play for the first time this year, special teams in the game at Buffalo. I just wondered, do they start to think about DMR, David Martin Robinson, as somebody who, and I know you've got five tight ends, so you think, boy, that's a lot, but he's such a good receiver and he's such a big matchup problem do you start to think about him a little bit in that mix, Jimmy? I do. I like him. I thought he had a great training camp, really impressive preseason. I think as this season goes on, I mean, the, the, the coach is still going to win. I think when people see what happened this week and see the moves, they think, okay, you're you're tanking. There's no such thing as tanking in the NFL. Coaches are playing to win. Players are playing to win. But I think as this season goes on and if this – um, I think part of it's going to be finding out what you have in other guys. And David Martin Robinson, I, I'd, li I'd like to see him. I, I – I guess I personally wouldn't mind it if he was active instead of uh, maybe Nick Manette on a game day just to see what he has. So, uh, and that's not taking away thing for Vanette, who caught some passes on Sunday, but I, that's how much I like David Martin Robinson. So, I could see that. Um, I do think this becomes more of a team that focuses on trying to run the football and the personnel may be different out there. And that sounds great, but if you fall down 34 to 10 like you did against Buffalo, then that you makes it more it. difficult. Yeah, you got to yeah. you got to sling it around. So yeah, it it makes sense to go lighter at receiver and just line up and try to run the ball. But this, this is a game where the Titans could probably have to score some points to uh, to be competitive. Well, Jaquan Jackson was a guy that while he's doing a nice job on the kickoff returns, he's been very solid. Um, he was not ready to play a lot of receiver early in the season, which is not a surprise. A lot of rookie receivers aren't. Is he ready to do more there now? And I don't know that we know the answer to that. And if he's not, do you call up Mason Kenzie for a game like this and he's the fifth wide receiver? Because you know Mason, having been here five years, knows what to do. Um, he also gives you a team's possibility. Or do you look at Oliver? Do you? Do you I mean, Oliver is a – Pretty good-looking talent now. I, I don't know where he is in the sphere of understanding of the offense, but he has some physical ability. We saw that in the preseason. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's what's going to be interesting to watch. Obviously, we'll see how things develop in practice and who's getting the reps. And, and then, of course, Saturday, the decision will have to be made whether one of those guys a game day elevation, whether they're elevation to the 53. You know, maybe it's a scenario where they give each of those guys a chance as we move forward to – and. Uh, I will be curious to see what it is. I, I like Oliver, too. I thought Oliver did a really solid job uh, during the summer and has put himself in a position to help his team if he needs to. All right. Topic number three. Did we miss it with Isaiah Prince? Meaning, did because he was signed earlier this week to the practice squad, look at you. <laughs> uh, did, no, I, I didn't I think, miss it. I, I'm not saying you missed it, <laughs> but – so he was signed to the practice squad earlier this week. He's an offensive tackle. He's a veteran offensive tackle. And I think he would have been more of a topic had the trade news not hit yesterday. So let's take a second, and then, Jim, I want you to talk about where you think he may or may not fit, not necessarily for this week, but does he get a look? This is a player, Isaiah Prince, who uh, was drafted in – round number six by Miami in 2019. He is 27 years old. He played for the Dolphins four games, started two at right tackle in 2019. They waived him 12-5-19, December 5, 2019. He was claimed by Cincinnati off waivers. Same day. Well, the next day. Well, I guess Close. so. Yeah. I mean, being technically correct. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, he doesn't really do anything for the, for Cincinnati. And then in 2020, he opts out for COVID. He opted out, and we forget that a lot of players did that. That's something that, until I was reading 
his bio, that was something I thought to myself, oh, gosh, I haven't thought about that. And Forgot that was a thing. He opted out for the whole year, July 31st, 2020. So he went off and uh, worked out, did boxing, learned a lot of things, felt like he filled out better, came back to Cincinnati in 2021, was a backup, and then Riley Reef injured an ankle. Mm. And so guess who becomes the right tackle? Isaiah Prince. He starts the final three regular season games. He started Cincinnati's playoff game here after starting their playoff game where they beat the Raiders at home. And then he started the AFC championship game, which they won. And then he was their right tackle in the Super Bowl. Wow. Uh, In training camp 2022, he injures an elbow. And he's put on injured reserve to start the season. He was taken off injured reserve November 21st. They waived him, signed him to the practice squad, and he was up and down the rest of the year. Uh, He signed with Denver last offseason in 2023, was cut in training camp, was in Atlanta for a period of time, but has been away from football since last September. And now he is here. Mm Mm-hmm. And is a veteran presence, uh, good size, six five, six seven, yeah, six seven, three oh five, yeah. I think. Whew. Forty-one game college starter. He was a top hundred recruit out of Greenbelt, Maryland, and um, here he is. So does does he? I don't know that he factors into any rotation this week, but is that a name we've got to really start to learn, especially? With his history with Brian Callahan, I think so. I mean, it's, I think you know Leroy, Watt, Leroy Watson is who I expect to kind of be back in the fold, back in the rotation, or back in the starting lineup this week. And again, that's without uh, any hints from practice, just the way things have gone. Jalen Duncan sideline with the hammy, Nicholas Petit Ferrer, while he stepped in and replaced Duncan on Sunday. Didn't I don't think he did anything to help solidify that his spot there and and probably continue to frustrate coaches by the way way he played so what they're looking for is a tough physical player who is is going to bring an attitude to that position I think Leroy Watson gives you that and now Isaiah Prince has to prove himself to Bill Callahan and Nick Holtz and Brian Callahan that he potentially could be the next man up behind Watson. So we'll see. I watched him a little bit in practice on Wednesday. He is he is a big man. He stepped in, worked. I don't know if it was Olga or Bert, Bertha, one of the two uh, sleds <laughs> over there. He handled handled the sled pretty well first day, and um, and I think they'll try to develop him uh, over the course of the next couple of weeks. Again, don't think it's this week. He's just kind of getting his getting his feet wet. But um, I would think that uh, behind Watson, he probably is uh, trying to convince him he's a better option than Nicholas Petit for air at this point. Hey, Titans fans, with a Kroger Boost membership, you'll score big with double fuel points, free delivery, and lots more. Go to Kroger.com slash boost for details. Kroger, official grocer of the Tennessee Titans. Tighten up. Home is at the forefront of all that we do. It's why we're so committed to caring for the places and spaces in which we work and live. Ashley, the official furniture provider of the Tennessee Titans. The OTP pregame with the great Jim Wyatt continues. Topic number four. Are you ready, Jim? I am. Hmm. Dan Campbell started his tenure as head coach of the Detroit Lions 4-19-1. and Me to repeat Hmm. that? Yeah. 4 19 and 1. Hmm. Since then, Dan Campbell and the Detroit Lions are 27 and 8. That's 77% winning percentage. It's pretty strong. What do you believe changed to turn the NFC's worst team into what is arguably the NFC's best team as we talk about them going there this weekend. Yeah, it's pretty amazing because I think a lot of people were questioning whether he had what it took to be a good head coach. And maybe he's just a lot of bluster that comes with him. And he's proven that he can coach. And I think what changed is that guys bought into what he's preaching. And 
that's that's playing together that's playing physical that's um that's holding each other accountable he holds himself accountable when they lose he's he's the guy that usually takes the blame and you can get away with that uh every once in a while when you're losing every once in a while you can't get away with that when you're losing all the time and they have figured out a way to consistently win so uh, i think his players believe in him i think they love his passion for the game uh, and i think that this is the best team on the schedule i think this year and, and the biggest challenge that they're going to have the titans are going to have all season all season i do wow that's I a do. strong statement yeah, yeah well, there's, no, there's no Ravens on the schedule, no Chiefs on the schedule, and uh, I think the Lions are the best team in the NFC. Well, I mean, they're they're clearly for real. I mean, some of their offensive numbers are just stupid. Um, their offense averages 7.2 yards per play on first down. That's number one in the league. Number two in the NFL in total yards, number two in yards per play, number two in points per game. Wow. Jared Goff is doing unheard of things. Out of his mind, he is playing. And they got him in a 2021 trade that I think worked for both teams. Right. Mm-hmm. I, I really do. I think the it worked for Matthew Stafford. He won a Super Bowl and got the Rams what they needed. And Detroit, certainly, golf has played brilliantly. Uh, he's on his way to his fourth Pro Bowl. He might be the MVP. Wow. I mean. Who yeah. would have thought? That one day we'd be having 30. conversations about he's Jared 30, Goff. Amy. Wow. Do you know what's wild about him? Is he was the number one pick in the twenty sixteen draft, the pick the Titans traded to the Rams. Yep. So he's he's the first, you know, he's the first pick in, in that draft. So he's been in the league nine years. He's still just thirty. His backup is Hendon Hooker. Yeah. Hendon Hooker is in his second year in the NFL. In January, he'll be 27. Yeah. <laughs> That's weird. Isn't that strange? Yes, it is. That's the, because after Jared Goff got into the pros, the transfer portal became a thing. COVID happened. Yeah. All of these things happened. And so his backup is is 26-year-old Hendon Hooker, who will be 27 in January. But Jameer Gibbs and David Montgomery in the, in the backfield, they get Amon Ross St. Brown in the fourth round. The fourth Wild. round. Yep. And he's one of three players in NFL history with 90 receptions plus in his first three years. And then on defense, they've gotten all these guys. And, I I mean, everything has just fit together perfectly. And then they've gotten lucky. Let me give you the best idea of how they've gotten lucky. Okay. Did you see how they won last week? I don't know that I did. Okay. 44-yard field goal with, like, 15 seconds to go. It was kicked by a guy named Jake Bates. All right. Do you know the Jake Bates story at all? I don't know the Jake okay. Bates story. So Jake Bates, the kicker for the best team in the NFC right now, is from Tomble, Texas, which is 28 miles from Houston. It's okay. in Harris County. He was an unbelievable high school soccer player. I mean, like recruited high school soccer player. He goes out for football his senior year. And he becomes the kickoff guy. Tries two field goals that year. Doesn't make either one of them. It doesn't really matter because he's going to college to play soccer. So he goes to Central Arkansas to play soccer. Plays two seasons at Central Arkansas. And then decides, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to Texas State. And he backs up a guy named Seth Keller and becomes the kickoff man at Texas State. Okay. Okay. Well, then in 2022, he says, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to Arkansas. I'm going to go try to play in the SEC. Sure. And he becomes all-conference as a kickoff man at Arkansas. Their place kicker is a guy named Cam Little. Okay. So here's what you got in Jake Bates of Tomball, Texas. Never made a high school field goal. Never made a kick in college. (laughs) Okay? Sure. 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 Sure, why not? So he says, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go out for the Houston Texans. So he gets a free agent, undrafted contract with the Houston Texans. I mean, they've got Kaimi Fairbairn, who's one of the four or five best kickers in the league. Might be the best kicker in the league if Baltimore didn't have and Kansas City. Anyway, he's really good. 
So he does not beat out Kaimi Fairbairn. No. So he's done. But he tried. Good job. He sells bricks in Houston last fall. This time last year, Jake Bates is selling bricks in Houston. <laughs> Didn't even know that was a thing. It's but a get thing. it, man. So he decides, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go out for this USFL. And then suddenly he starts getting on everybody's radar because he makes three 60-plus yard field goals. He actually made one of them twice. He hit a 64-yard field goal, but the other team had called timeout, so they did it again, and he made it. Wow. So all of a sudden, everybody's pretty excited about Jake Bates. So the hometown Detroit Lions bring him in to compete with Michael Badgley. Okay. So the only place kicking he's ever done in a game where he made a kick was in the USFL. Michael Badgley gets hurt on July 31st, <laughs> and Jake Bates has been the kicker ever since. That's wild. He is 10 of 10 on field goals, 20 of 21 on extra points. He has 29 touchbacks on kickoffs. And this guy never made a field goal in high school Never made a field goal in college. And now he is the kicker. For the Detroit Lions. For the Detroit that's a, Lions. That's a great story. I hey, didn't know hey I'm going to tell you something. That's how you get to 27 and yeah. 8. Yeah. <laughs> you get, yeah, but, you but get I, that guy. I'm, but I'm saying you get, um, you get your first round picks to work out. You make a good trade for a quarterback. You get Amon Ross St. Brown in the fourth round, and he mm -hmm. turns out to be a player of historic proportions. And you've got Ben Johnson as the offensive coordinator, and you got Aaron Glenn as the defensive coordinator. You get all this good stuff. Yeah. And yet, you still need Tom Bull, Texas' yeah. own. I mean, a year ago, Jim. Selling bricks. I mean, that could be, seriously, that could be your son or my son. Age wise, yeah, yeah, yeah. That because we have kids that age, yeah, and and they say, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go out for kicker of the Detroit Lions, you know. <laughs> okay, I mean, that's yeah. crazy. Wow, that's a great story. I didn't know that about Jake, Jake Bates. Bates. Makes that 44 yarder the other day and looks like he's, yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> Got ice in his veins. Well, I mean, everybody, coolest brick salesman in America. <laughs> everybody. Everybody wants a kicker like Nick Folk, who's done it a hundred million times. Mm -hmm. And yet Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes and the people in Detroit, they're like, if he can make a kick, I mean, because when Badgley got hurt, everybody's like, oh, you got to bring in the, you know, the assortment of kickers who are out there who, you know, yeah. feels like all those guys ride around in a van from city <laughs> to city. Well, they do. It's the they, same yeah. five guys, and you'd think they'd just get a VW van and just yeah. ride around and be yep. like, oh, look, you know, it's New so England's so. yeah. kicker got hurt. Let's go up and all try out, and yep. you know. That would be a great TV show, It actually. would be a great TV like show. Like a really strong TV show. <laughs> it's time for the key ingredients of the game. Oh, wait. Are you ready? I don't have my props, Mike. Okay. Jim's got it. There we go. Okay. Jim. We did this last time, I remember. We yes, sure well, we do did. it every time because we're a sponsored program. It's time for the key ingredients of the game delivered by Little Caesars. Amy Wells will time me. I'm supposed to do this in under a minute. Go. Key number one for the Titans in Detroit is keeping the tight ends involved in the offense. Chick Akakwo, Nick Bennett, and Josh Wiley. Combined to catch 11 passes for over 100 yards last Sunday. The tight ends were good in every situation. It's certainly helpful to the team's offensive flow. More tight end involvement is needed Sunday in Detroit. Key number two is to keep Tony Pollard involved and successful for all four quarters. Pollard rushed for 64 yards on 11 carries in the first half at Buffalo as the Titans took the lead into halftime. In the second half, Tony Pollard five carries for minus three. He didn't have a carry in the last quarter and a half of the game. Pollard has to be a part of the offense for all 60 minutes for the Titans to beat the Lions. At key number three, the Titans defense has to make a big play. Last week, one sack, no takeaways. If the Titans want to beat Detroit this Sunday, that will not cut it. The Tennessee defense needs to sack Jared Goff more than once, and they need to take the football away from the Lions offense to help set up easy scoring opportunities. You didn't do it! Six seconds over, Mike! <laughs> well, show the, wait a minute, you got to show that. 
No, no, not oh. that. The <laughs> pizza boxes. We did them already. He, he held them up like. Oh, my gosh. You didn't do it. Little Caesars is the official pizza partner of your Tennessee Titans. Download the Little Caesars app and get your favorites delivered today. Delivery fees do apply. Mike. Yes. Six seconds I'm over. Sorry. I'm sorry. I got too excited. Here it's, you go, Jim. All right, Jim. I, I bet Jake Bates, Jake Bates could have done that. He could have done seconds. it. I've got to read this part, though. <gasps> it's a mayo tovation from Hellman's. Mayo Titans cheers be loud and your buffalo chicken dip make you, your mama, and the entire family proud. Hellman's, the official mayo of the Tennessee Titans, <coughs> Jim is not as enthusiastic holding the <laughs> I know. the helmet. It's a little heavier. I'm having to keep it closer to the table. May your game day be delicious. Hey, Titans fans, SeatGeek makes it easy to find tickets so you can be a part of all the touchdown celebrations this season. Whether you're buying or selling football tickets, SeatGeek is the place to do it. SeatGeek is the official primary ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. The most disruptive idea in ticketing, a ticket that works. Expect the expected. SeatGeek. SeatGeek. <laughs> <laughs> Made a rookie mistake this football season? Maybe you should have had a Snickers. Because now you can enter for the chance to turn those rookie mistakes into prizes, including a trip to Super Bowl 59. Visit snickers.com slash rookie mistakes for details. Topic number five. Because we only did four. Because we only did four. Mm. Is we want to congratulate Jim Wyatt. On being inducted <laughs> into the Tennessee Sports Writers Association Hall of Fame. We got the news this morning. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> we already had you set up for this, so we were so happy. Come on in here. Come on in. We got stuff. We got people. Oh, look we at you. Huh? <laughs> we got a cake. <laughs> oh, what a great oh, artist. I appreciate this. I appreciate this. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, I, I want to tell you something that's really special is I know how you started. Yes. I know I know what you had to do to get into the business. Come on in. Come on in. Bring everybody in. Whatever. <laughs> um, I mean, you, you started at the bottom. You were part-time at the Tennessean and had to work other jobs to make ends meet while you were trying to fulfill your dream. And then you became the preps writer. No offense to anybody else. You're the best preps writer I ever saw. I appreciate it. They could put you in the Hall of Fame strictly for what you did on preps. That's awesome. And then with some great tutors, uh, especially our friend Jeff Legwald, you became uh, the Titans beat writer and went on to do special things with that. And then 2015, uh, for our great Titans fans, we convinced you to come over here and be part, part of our team because we thought – you could do something really special for what we do with our website and for how we cover the team. And you have been an, an absolute top five pick for us. I mean, it is 35 years of busting your butt, and we are so happy for you to be inducted into the Tennessee Sports Writers Association Hall of Fame. You are so deserving. You are as we've always known, the great <laughs> – you are the great Jim Wyatt. You are the great Jim Wyatt. Well, I appreciate it. I appreciate Show it. Show him your cake. Yeah, what a great Got cake. I don't cake. know if I can hold this up. I may, I may uh, drop it, but uh, I appreciate uh, you saying all that. I appreciate everybody coming in here. It was a great surprise for me to find that out. Um, you know, some great – people in the Hall of Fame, people I worked with. And, you know, when I got out of school, as you mentioned, I worked a, I worked a full-time job somewhere else at a place called the Register of Deeds. From the time I got out of college, I was working at the newspaper at night part-time. And I worked full-time job, 40 hours, and I'd go down and work at the paper 30, 35 hours a week. I did that for about six, seven years, uh, working 75, 80 hours a week. And then I got a chance uh, you know, John Bibb was a sports editor. I worked with Jimmy Davey and David Clymer and Larry Woody. Um, ended up working with Joe Biddle. Uh, you know, Mike Oregon helped break me in. You mentioned Jeff Legwald. Larry Taft. Yeah, Larry Taft. I mean, so many people just kind of showed me the way. I just didn't want to let them down. I mean, that was my whole uh, motivation when I started working there is I didn't want to be the weak link and I didn't want to get beat on stories. I want to do the best job I possibly could do. And uh, so I love working the paper, and I love working here. I've been very fortunate to be able to do it so long. I always tell people you start 
maybe getting recognition like this when you're getting old, older. Uh, so, <laughs> so I guess it's a sign. I'm getting old, but I appreciate it. I appreciate the cake. Appreciate everybody, you know, coming in here. And uh, it's been a this has been a great part of my career too, being able to work for my hometown team, uh, Nashville native, as you mentioned, went to Father Ryan High School. Never dreamed we'd have an NFL team in this city, and uh, never dreamed I'd be working for it. So been I've been very lucky. We're just proud of you. Yeah, I, mean, I that's appreciate all we it. Can say when we saw the news today, it made all of our days. And uh, you are truly, you've always been a Hall of Famer in our books, but to see this great organization recognize you, um, it's just, a, it's the right thing. It's a special thing. And it's certainly a happy moment for everybody who is involved with the Tennessee Titans and your many fans, and you do have them, they love you. Um, to, to know that this has happened to you, I know I've joined with a lot of people in wishing you the best congratulations and uh, a job well done. Now go to practice. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, now get out. Get out. <laughs> you have Be to get go. the cake later. Yeah. It, it's, you know. <laughs> well, I appreciate go. that. I appreciate it. Way to go. Thank you. All right. For Hall of Famer Jim Wyatt it and Amy good, Wells, Jim. it does sound good. <laughs> I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us for the OTP. Yay, right, Jimmy. Thank you. Thank you.